Check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. What is up, guys? Your Riddles, your boy Kagi, back at it again with a new video. And in this video, I bring you the developers of Hashrush. Hashrush is in open beta, it's an RTS on the Vortex network. Now, let's introduce um, the developers for this game and let's ask them a few questions. Let's see where they come from, what is this game all about, and what is the future of Hashrush. Welcome, Nathan, and welcome, Tenson. So, if you guys can give me a little background of um, who you guys are and how you know hashers came about and the vortex network as well hey keggy nice nice to be here with you um i'm nathan i'm the studio lead and creative director of uh hash rush uh been let's say with the company since its inception with along with chris in 2017. um yeah so it's this is this is our first game uh rts we've been in the blockchain scene let's say uh from, from the beginning and hash rush was always uh, meant to be this bridge between crypto and, and, and traditional gaming and being avid uh, RTS fans, uh, both me and Chris and Tenzin as well. Um, we decided to push with this genre uh, for a game because uh, this is a genre that we understand and we love. Uh, avid fans of uh, <clears throat> Starcraft and Warcraft, Age of Empires, Heroes of Might and Magic as well. But like, yeah, the Warcraft most most uh, most predominantly. What about you, Tenzin? Hi there. So yeah, my name's Tenzin. Um, uh, I'm uh, kind of from all around the world. I was born in UK, but I have parents from Tibet and Czech Republic. I now live in the Netherlands. I'm and I moved here from Germany actually. So I've been traveling a lot. I've been working in the gaming industry pretty much all my life. It was my first main job, and uh, traditionally it was in the regular MMO scene. But after like just when like Ethereum was new, uh, cryptocurrency started picking up again. Um, I moved, yeah, I moved over to um, Hashrush. This was back in like I think 2018 is when I started. So um, there, that's when I met Chris and uh, Nathan. And it was pretty much a um, it came out of a random talk between me and a friend of mine. We were just like looking at RTS games, and Hashrush came up because it was like blockchain RTS. And from that moment, I've just been looking at how blockchain can improve games because big issue of mine is i just got sick about the greed that you find in uh free-to-play games and uh, how they just try to milk you of money all the time and i see blockchain as a way to you know um well rebalance things a bit while still letting the developers actually you know earn enough to keep things going and yeah, yeah like nathan said rts games has been my favorite genre all, for all time yeah, hell yeah. RTS are amazing, man. Like, look, I also played uh, Age of Empires 2. That was my RTS, like, go-to RTS. Um, obviously, I didn't, um, after that, didn't do any other RTS, but Age of Empires was, like, you know, so it, it's close to my heart. My math teacher used to, and I'll give you a little story here, why I like Hash Rush, and I liked it from the beginning since, like, 2020, um, and then I made a video. And my math teacher used to, like, not do classes and just send us to you know to 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 the to the computer lab just to play age of empires that was our math class the best math class i have ever had i've like it's just the best way to learn about economy so uh, wow. I, I, I'm, I'm connected with you guys you know in that sense <laughs> let me ask you so what is hash rush i we already know hash rush is an rts but what is the lore what exactly is hash rush what are people what should people be expecting from hash rush as a game well, from Hashrush, people can expect a, let's say, coming home to a classic uh, RTS game that we, that you, me, Tenzin, and a lot of lot of other folks around the world love. Uh, but bringing this uh, synergy between uh, owning uh, actually your heroes, which are a key component of the game, uh, in the Warcraft three sort of way, uh, when you have your traditional units, your buildings, and you have also heroes that can uh, you can apply gear to them and uh they empower your your let's say core gameplay when you're fighting against the ai uh but yeah hash rush in terms of lore it is set in the fictional uh Hermaean galaxy that has just suffered a huge uh crystal storm that turned basically everything around the galaxy in a in let's say a, a devastating except especially for the urnax the, the main faction that you play uh, they suffered a, a de-evolution where they basically regressed from this uh, ascended, um, very high magic uh, society to, to these little wimpy wimpy guys that you see around uh, in, in, in the game uh, when harvesting resources or, 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 or making, let's say, military units. Um, 
and yeah of course with with uh, ownable assets so let's say as as gear materials uh and and heroes uh, we give the opportunity for players to actually trade those on the orto uh marketplace between players and uh, let's say giving that play and earn actually a a a meaning yeah, and can you explain a little bit more about the play and earn, play, and, uh, play to earn, blah, blah, blah. I know you guys never like went full on on the play to earn aspect. You guys have already a full game. Uh, I mean, we could talk about that, like how you guys had a full game in 2020, kind of transition, made some changes, and now you, you guys kind of revamped the game. But anyways, you guys never really, really went with the play to earn concept, play to earn uh, a narrative and the pumps and dumps of this Ponzi's, right? Yeah. So, um, so why was it? What do you identify at the beginning? In that it's kind of like said nah this is not it right yeah well we had the uh, let's say idea of earning through a game uh that mm -hmm. that has been let's say at the back of our heads uh, throughout the whole project and, and development but we wanted to want to make a game first because if the game is is not fun the game doesn't have legs to stand on then the whole blockchain and and and, and uh let's say the play and earn pump and dump as you say it's it's completely meaningless Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I just tweeted uh, recently. Like, it has to, it needs to have deeper economy, right? A deeper economy. It can't just be one token that you use for one thing and that's it. It has to be a deeper economy so that you know people get involved in this economy. Like they get involved, they're part of it. You know, they, maybe they trade one day, maybe they make some money. But the idea is not to extract, extract, extract. That doesn't make any sense, right? Is is to be able to to be part of this economy actively um, without the mentality of just extracting, which is super super annoying um, and it sucks because you know, like especially from a content creation perspective, you're creating content and then one day it's amazing, the game is amazing, and then you know a couple of weeks after like people left because they just wanted to extract and leave it's it's ridiculous now that's let me ask you go ahead Tenson. yeah i just want to say that's a big part of it because like um uh, we it was a big um topic on our side that we were not doing the play and earn stuff because you know all other games they came and went but when they were there they were huge but like we just kept looking from the perspective of games like we could do it but then every single user we had would vanish within a week or something like that because just like come and leave so we've always had an eye on like the long term like we want this to go on for ages this, we want this to be a service which you can keep playing for you know as for well yeah as long as the internet exists uh, if we can uh, but you know being realistic just as long as possible and one where we can just keep adding new content keep people playing and just have it fun for years and not rather than just like months or as other projects are sometimes yeah, and your your project is open right now. We are in open um, beta, right? That's what it is. And let me ask you a question. I, I play the game, obviously. We have a video. You guys can check that out. Gameplay, or it should be on the screen right now. But anyways, the point is that it's an open beta in a single player right now. It, will this be multiplayer? Will there be more um, modes to this um, hash rush RTS? Yeah, we're building upon the single player aspects at first. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning the standard mode and dungeon mode. Uh, if you're a if you're a fan of let's say the the core RTS, then the standard mode is for you. If you want let's say a breather from um, from the RTS for a bit, you can go into the dungeon mode. That and both modes um, give let's say some resources. They give the same, but there are a few resources that are different. So you have to play both modes to actually get uh, everything for, for from the economy side of things um of course in the future we have other modes uh planned and let's say additions to uh, let's say previous modes like let's say boss battles that, that we call them uh, uh titan, we call them the titan encounters and then we're we're pushing to get those out in early access this year um to get the full uh game loop but of course pvp and co uh, cooperative pvp uh let's say <clears throat> Our 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 uh, our goals. Let's say for 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 the future, of course. I can see it, man. PVP. Look, after you guys released uh, the beta, and I tried it, I started watching videos on StarCraft. I started watching videos on um, Age of Empires, and I started watching like competitions. And these people are insane, man. These people are like brainiacs, you know, because there's a lot that goes into you know handling this quick economy 
get, getting your 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 military up and then go attack the enemy and there's different strats right uh, it's very strategic and i would love to see that in obviously hash rush because hash rush is a beautiful game obviously we're in beta if you guys are playing this game don't judge it too hard we're in beta that's what it's all about you know trying the game and trying to break the game to see what needs to be fixed right so now you guys released just, go ahead there for something uh, it's about the pvp part it's because like um it's requested a lot by the community because like as you mentioned Starcraft, let's stop off and Asian Empires. You can even now just watch them on Twitch and see how amazing it is. It's just like we are planning it, I and mean, we've been planning for ages. It's just we want to do it right because if you played any MMO, you know the problems, hackers, everything like that. And now you think about it, you have a hackers coming to a game where you can earn in a like that is a recipe for disaster. So our approach to PvP is pretty much the same as everything else. It's really building on security first because. If you want to just think about multiplayer, there's so many different layers you need to add in, like simply play authentication, a lobby system, a hack prevention, client server, like you have to check the versioning between each person. Then you've got to synchronize the data between it, matchmaking systems, uh, s scaling the servers, cloud management so systems. Uh, you've got to worry about DDoS attacks. You need to somehow handle desynchronization because sometimes you have lag between players. What happens if the client disconnects? Um, that's just the stuff off the top of my head. There's a lot more which have to be done. And these there are a huge amount of things that backend developers have to do. So like we mentioned PVP and our backend developers are just sweating, thinking, please, please know that we need to do this safely because they know how important the core economy of hash rush is. So really the message is to everyone, we know we need more pay. We want more pay. I want to play against people, but we also know play to earn. Like, okay, MMOs are already hack targets. Play to earn MMO will be the hack targets of everyone because you can then seriously earn from it. So we are looking on security as the, like, it needs to be as impregnable as possible. Like, so that's where we're going for. And I know, I mentioned that because I know on, I've seen on Discord, some people are concerned that if you do it too quickly, where will security be? Now, security is the first thing we're going for before anything. So it may take us a bit longer for PvP. It will come, but we're doing it in the way that we hope is right and making it safe from the start. I can attest to that. I agree, actually. I'm actually playing an MMO right now that has some crypto elements. But anyways, a lot of botting and stuff like that going on and bullshit. So I totally agree with that. You know, just take your time. I I'm down for it. I'm down for it. Now, can you explain to me the DAO? Hash Rush DAO. You guys came out with this just recently. What is this all about? What is this DAO all about? Give us a little bit of insight into what the DAO will do. Uh, for the people that don't know, if you're new into crypto games, NFT games, Web3 games, however you want to call it, it's a decentralized autonomous organization in which people get to participate in voting towards the future of hash rush and different elements, right? But what does that mean for you guys? So this one is a bit um, different to what a traditional DAO would be because like, we have always been blockchain and uh, seriously a DAO is a potential that can be a powerful good if done correctly now the problem where we like why we didn't do this sooner was because if you look on a DAO in let's say this is my opinion i might be wrong and i'm maybe someone will prove me wrong in the future but i do not think a true decentralized autonomous um, organization can work with a game because players are not game designers they're like they don't know the various stages of balancing like not everyone, but the majority of players will always want the best. So the way that the hash rush DAO is set up is that it is made to seriously give people a way to give a voice to their suggestions, to their feedback and stuff like that. And also when it gets to the vote, it will be a binding thing. So like if it, if a vote wins, I will be the one who's on the forums and giving them feedback on like, okay, you guys voted for this feature. This is where it is in our development plan. This is the progress of it. It's like it may not be done right away because we have, you know, sprints where development comes in. But yeah, um, I guess then going back to the question, think of it as that if you're a gamer, you have the old um, forums, right? So there are, there's a suggestion section in the forums. People will post the suggestions in the forums and in traditional games, 99% of times those suggestions are ignored. Maybe you get some lip service of, yeah, this is a cool idea, we'll work on it. Three years later, you still have no clue what's going on. So the DAO for Hashrush replaces the suggestion forum where the People, like, we will use it as well. Like, we will come up with ideas and sometimes say, okay, listen, A or B, you as a community, you tell us, right? We've got a question right now. We work, we, there will be new planets. Like, we are working on the next planet already in development, but after that, so what type of planet should we add in? Will it be a volcano-based planet or will it be a, um, I forgot the other one, uh, I think mountain-based planets. Um, and because, like, 
that that is a genuine choice and uh, in my experience people actually want to be able to have a say in these small things but that's like obviously the first question we're giving out to the community letting them choose on that but otherwise um generally anyone can go into the forums uh, they can uh, put their suggestion forwards and uh, the way it like it will work as a normal DAO. you discuss it and it gets put a vote however there's the extra phase where i will bring the idea to our game designer and we go over two questions one is it technically possible because for example somebody may say add uh, i don't know the best rtx features into hash rush like why we would love to have that technically in hash rush it may not work because of the way the code is set up now i'm not saying that rtx won't it's just because nvidia's recent announcement i've got rtx on my mind that's the only reason i mentioned that then the second question is will it work with the game design because like oh, hash rush is sort of like fantasy sci-fi it won't be the it won't work really with the game design if people want us to have give Aranax a um hero unit which rides on a pink unicorn shooting laser guns out of its horn or something like that like as fun as i can be maybe it can be a unique hero in the future but as a core unit that doesn't work with the game design so those are the parts where after the session is done and uh, <clears throat> me game designer nathan the team really will check if it works if it works great i will just say yes this is technically and possible and game is impossible community discusses it and then if it is a popular one it goes to a vote um and if the vote passes then i will have a fun time adding it to our development sprint and uh, constantly like it's a commitment which i have to always give them feedback on where, where this is like even if there is like sorry we are not starting this right now sure i'll write that but then i'll say we are projected to start this in let's say three months maybe because we have three month sprints so it will be planned in and then once the development starts i'll just weekly say okay developers work started working on this feature this is what they've accomplished they've managed to make a first draft of it or they've managed to make this version or hey it's in our dev build of the game i am testing it here's a recording footage of the feature that you wanted so i see it as a streamlined version of a suggestion of the old suggestion but with an actual relevance because uh, once like our commitment is once it's to a vote it means that we verified it and so we will listen to what the community says yeah um, I, yeah I, I, I yeah yeah i agree i agree with what you're saying i i knew that from the beginning actually um it just doesn't make sense that so there's you know a game has so many components right you what you're gonna decide now as a community how the how the earn next should look how the the game should play how the ui should look how how, how you code it like it doesn't make any sense right it, it's just at the end of the day it's, it's about giving power to the community to a certain extent, giving them a, a little bit of options. Sometimes you can be like, yo, guys, we got two designs. Which ones you guys like the most, right? And maybe those two designs, you guys are you guys don't mind as a, as a dev team, you guys don't mind that which design goes up. But you're giving options to the community. You want this one or you want this one? You got two options. That's it. But you're giving power to the community because the community gets to decide. Or maybe you give them three options or four options, right? When, yeah. when it's an, an artwork or a gameplay, um, a new world, new map or whatever, right? So it's about giving the community options and bringing them in a little bit into the development of the game and the suggestions. So I agree with that. I totally agree. Now, now how are you going to stop suggestions that are like, you know, dumb suggestions? Does this mean people have to put a little bit of coins in to, to make a suggestion? Do they need to hold a certain amount of coins to make a suggestion? Because I've seen other DAOs that have this kind of system where if you want to make a suggestion, you better put your money where your mouth is so that people don't go like, hey, let's draw, uh, you know, some, you know, a dick, you know, you know, in gaming, we know in gaming, this is like a big yeah. thing, you know, <laughs> trolling. Yeah, I've, I've had this discussion with the team many times because I'll actually, the example which I gave them was um, actually a lot more extreme because if it was truly open, truly decentralized, a group of people could come and say, we want the game to close, put it to vote and they vote. Like what, what the hell happens if the vote for yes, the game should close wins. That's like, yeah, that can't happen. So mm -hmm. there is no like, okay, you need the rough coin to vote and that's it. To make the proposal is open. However, um, this is where the part where we have to say that it's not truly decentralized because it is still, there is an aspect from us uh, as in the team mm -hmm. where uh, once the proposal is made there, this is where then um, myself or Lixil or, you know, whoever or the team member, the Hatrash team is on the front at the time, it, that proposal gets sent over to the rest of the VZ team, including the game designers, and it gets like reviewed. Like as I mentioned previously, we check is this like um, 
possible, technically? Is it possible from a game design? And obviously, we see, is this a positive? I mean, like, in that case there. And uh, it's like, I've already been told by everybody on side, this is going to be a really hard task for me, especially if we reach the targets we want, where the players are going to be active. And so I will have to be there with, uh, you know, Alexio and Alan and just the rest of the team watching it. But I, it's something I hold dear to my heart because I, you know, working on um, traditional games, I've seen suggestions be ignored. So I'm happy to put that commitment to look into it. Um, but yeah, it, it's just our own verification to make sure that uh, those things don't go in. And uh, like, I get that this does take away a lot from the whole decentralized parts. Um, and ultimately it comes down to you. I, I guess I will have to prove it through actions on the way I do it. But my commitment is really to give a fair overview of these things and constantly give the feedback there. So like no suggestions are going to be left handed. Like if there's a stupid one, I, I won't just ignore it. I'll just say, yeah, not possible. And where possible, give a reason why not possible. Like I don't want to, it will have to be done. I'm, you know, I'm not naive. I'm sure it will come up. I hope it won't come up often. We'll see. It's just work on my hand if it does. But yeah, it, that, those are the sort of controls. And like that, that's why it, I don't see it as a true decentralized organization. However, it is as decentralized as we can do it right now. Obviously in the future, we can learn there may be something more happens, you know, technology has changed, something else can happen, which I can't dream of now. And uh, we've already agreed that this is going to be as adaptable as possible. Something changes in the future, we will change it. So, like, okay, if it's a big change, it will be a vote to the community. Like, hey, listen, this has come. It's a potential to change how the DO changes. Do you like it? Do you think it's a positive or not? If they say yes, then we adapt it. If they say no, then it doesn't. Or yeah, in general, like we already have an eye on being adaptable. So we've agreed it. It's going to be adaptable when something comes up. Now, but, let's switch yeah. gears here a little bit. Let's switch <laughs> gears. How how do you guys see the... How, how does the play to earn or play and earn work in your game exactly? How do people... What is it that people can do? What is it that people can earn in your game um, to, to progress in your game, right? Um, can you give us a little bit of a deeper understanding of the play to earn economy? Nathan, you want this? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so uh, with our two modes that are out now, uh, in standard mode, uh, you play on different types of biomes. Each biome gives you certain um, crafting resources after you complete a match. If you have harvested crystals uh, throughout, uh, throughout the match, or you got some, got some crystals from clearing out, uh, let's say, uh, mob camps, uh, that we added just recently um you get also crystals so at the end of the match if you win depending on how many bases you uh, how many chests you got from from uh, enemy bases that's the amount of uh, of either unique resources you get from that biome extra crystals um and then then the craftable and also already built gear uh so that's the thing those are the the things that you get from your standard mode so mm -hmm. crystals are not tradable because that's the catalyst for for any type of crafting in the game so let's say if people could cr trade crystals that would just break break the economy because you would have let's say crystal farmers all, all 24 7 on on, <laughs> on 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 the marketplace and basically you could get everything from the marketplace that kind of beats the purpose of, of actually grinding yourself Mm -hmm. uh when for from the uh dungeon mode uh you can get uh vault keys uh vault is a s separate let's say feature that's that's going to be let's say implemented more in in uh, in early access uh but uh from the dungeon mode you can also get not only crystals but you can get uh, equipment cores so equipment cores plus crystals plus unique resources that you get from the standard mode equals gear um i believe that tends and uh i <laughs> hope i'm not, not and then and then, and then what that gear anything. and then what that gear you can like trade that gear right um in yeah. the vortex platform yeah so it's like those gears the gear is actually extremely useful because um it goes back to the heroes so your heroes can actually be equipped with gear mm -hmm. and uh, it makes them a lot stronger because uh, you know you have like your standard hero no equipment it has stats that's great so you equip it with a gear and it becomes stronger and the gear comes in sets as well and different rarities as well so like um when you craft a gear you can craft a what was it a common uncommon rare epic and legendary uh, the thing is this that like 
um, the, the legendary legendary gears can is can only be gotten when you're crafting a rare, and it's like a ten percent chance. Um, I can't remember the percentage for sure, but it's only a chance after you craft the rare one. So, um, uh, yeah, the gears are strong in that sense. But it's not only that. Like this is a future um, uh, plan. It's already designed. It's coming in soon. But then the gear will actually um, they have stats. Um, uh, each gear has a main stat, so it could be like physical attack. A percentage physical attack or flat physical attack hp or speed or a movement speed or anything like that like those are the main stats and that's like a big one then they have four substats if it is a um yeah and they have four substats and you have to upgrade them and the thing is this that like every time you upgrade it it's an input from you and uh, you're putting in your own time and value to it and the stat becomes it becomes better and once a fully upgraded gear is a lot um nicer um, yeah, it's a lot more powerful. Um, uh, and ultimately, like, that's where it becomes um, a lot more valuable to the player. So that's where the player to earn becomes even better. Because, like, you always get your basic stuff, and then you develop it to the final form. Mm. It's the same with heroes, because you can craft a hero um, or get it through the vault, so, but you always get them on level zero. But by using them, they get to level one, two, three, up to 30, and then we will eventually keep adding new level. And then so you can sell that on. effort, basically. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so like you can choose, like um, you can sell it on level zero or you can develop it like maybe at level 20. You think that, yeah, um, I, I don't want it anymore. You sell it. You don't you haven't wasted your time developing it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. Interesting. And, uh, I, 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 like, I really yeah. like that model, to be honest, that you can well, sell. The... If you don't play any mobile games like, you know, there's gacha games, you summon heroes. Our system is very similar to that. Except unlike the mobile games where you summon on and on and on and like, you know, you just burn thousands of euros in like half half an hour and you can't do anything with the dupes you get. In our game, if you get, you know, you don't get the right one, you get the other one, you can sell them, you ca carry on. And so it's not as bad. So we really aim it to be as friendly towards the users. This is where we're using blockchain, making it much more user friendly. Interesting. Now, is your game going to be available on Mac OS, right? And for the hash rush beta as of right now, the hash rush beta, you can play it on Windows, right? And yeah. for how long can we play this game, the beta? How long is it going to be open for? Uh, right, right now, um, let's say players can look forward to playing until let's say middle of uh, middle of October. Uh, we don't, we didn't want to close the doors that soon, especially let's say with with the today's uh, uh, DAO. Uh, DAO reveal and then let's say getting more players in and then driving the activity uh, and and let's say having that um, build up let's say throughout the end of uh, end of October and November for early access in, in December uh, so we have let's say players can still have something to play in the meantime uh, so yeah that's that's one of the uh, that's the way we wanted to do it with with the open beta and not limiting it to let's say a week or two weeks only perfect perfect and let me ask you about um the vortex network i really want to understand what the vortex is looking in the future right today you have hash rush under it um is a vortex network going to be a blockchain is it what, what is the tech here uh, just a quick thing because we didn't answer the mac one um oh. It doesn't really work right now on Mac. You can use um, uh, some of the, you know, some emulator stuff to get it to work. Some people works. We do want to have a proper Mac client in the future. It's something like we've had in the past, but it's development time. We really want to focus on the game. So future, yes, right now it's let's focus on getting the game really good on Windows first, and then we'll look on Mac. I've even asked them to look on Linux to, um, as well, because I like native clients for each platform. But yeah, over to you, Nathan, for the Volto question. Yes, yeah, so uh, with Vorto, uh, when we, uh, when both companies, let's say, join join together, uh, they are handling, let's say, the marketplace, the blockchain side, minting of NFTs on Nier currently, uh, and we provide, let's say, the game, and we're the first game, uh, let's say, fully on on the network, uh, let's say, a showcase showcase product as well. Um, they are focusing on getting, let's say, more games to the platform uh let's say working on few uh, extra functionality to make the platform even better um so yeah that there's a lot more to come in the future for vorto as well not only not only hash rush not only us as a game are evolving but the platform itself is is, is constantly moving forward 
Perfect. I'm looking forward to you guys. I mean, I've been following Hasher for so long now that I, I just feel like, uh, like you know, <laughs> I got to pay attention to it for forever now, you know, until until we see other games, until it becomes uh, this powerhouse of, of gaming. Um, I Thanks truly believe that you guys are going to, you know, achieve it. I mean, you guys haven't given up for so many years. It's crazy how long you guys have been developing, probably longer than anybody else here in, in the blockchain, to be honest. So that's amazing. That's amazing that you guys um, kind of put this together into a, into almost like a studio right now, right? Basically a studio that does many games. Uh, I think that's the meta now, right? But you guys are understood that beforehand. Yeah, yeah well, uh, let's say um, from 2017, uh, we have we're, we're we kind of like uh veterans already <laughs> at least i i feel like a veteran from from because I, I remember those uh blockchain conferences uh the icos uh, icos yeah yeah i remember yeah. that the wild west of of, of crypto wow, let's say i was there too and then and, and it's just it's just wild to do to, to see like uh how many crashes have happened how many huge let's say gains have happened to the moon 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah yeah and i was just, part of that to be honest um yeah, yeah part of the machine so, you know yeah what i do sometimes is just look back on our old like bitcoin talk threads and just look on the other icos that are announced at the same time and it just like makes me feel better because i'm always feeling guilty that sometimes like our blockchain promises are taking longer. Like we haven't forgotten a single one and we're always like working them. But I still sometimes feel bad about it. But then I look in the other projects that were announced at the time and uh, every time I go back to look on them, the list of still active ones just get lower and lower. I think I can count them on like one hand at this point. And that's just like, I'm really glad that we're still going on and pushing forward. It's like, how do we manage this? I'm not too sure. It's just at some point, like just pure passion from everyone going on. But yeah, that was amazing, and it's just like it's still going. Yeah. That's and we're making great. a game, not a gimmick. I think yeah, that's, that's that's one thing, I guess. Yeah, it's a lot of gimmicks out here, but there's also other games that are building pretty pretty nice. But you guys are you guys are there with with those games, kind of building um, a real game. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Now let's end this on a good note, ladies and gentlemen. What is next? Well, only gentlemen, because there's three gentlemen. But what is next for? hash rush what is next for hash rush in the next couple months um how does hash rush look in one year um give me some projections here and let's end it with that so that people can you know have a vision of, of what hash rush will look like right let's say um let's say big bullet points i can give you three uh early access 2022 um a second faction we're looking at uh, 2023 and let's say first iterations and then and let's say a more stable PVP later down the road as well. Let's say 2023. So nice, happy, uh, happy, happy exciting days to come. <laughs> no, no, I'm happy too because there's not a lot of RTSs here. That's the truth. There's only, I only know two, yours and some, another one. Um, so I'm I'm glad that you guys are you guys are ahead of the game in, in RTSs. Um, and I think people are not necessarily seeing it right now, but at some point, you know, it'll blossom, right? Unfortunately, yep. this market is very related to the crypto market. Um, things, you know, have a lot of views when the crypto's up, and when crypto's down, it has no views or no users. It's kind of kind of crazy. But uh, I do I truly believe that hash rush is unique. So. I'm looking forward to this. Awesome. Tencent, any last words, my friend? Yeah. Um, uh, every single bug that's being reported now, we're working on them to fix it. That, that's like, it, it's, it's normal to me because like I'm going over the over Discord. I'm going over everywhere. thinking, okay, this bug, this bug, this bug. I'm talking with the devs all the time. So like what I want to see is like what by the end of the year, like when we launch EA, as Nathan mentioned, 2022, end of this year, have all the bugs now sorted out, including pathfinding and all those really tricky stuff. And then like for me, 2023 is getting the play to earn system, or I would say play and earn, because you're not playing to earn, you're playing and you're earning as a side of playing. Having that in the game, just seeing that whole game loop there, being able to play and it's like, you don't have the earn part forced down your throat, but it is there and you can make use of it. And it's just like, I want to see that synergy come together. And that's what I'm looking forward to. And that's what I really believe will be big 
for the next the next year, early even next year. That's when. Yeah, the good stuff will be there. Well, looking forward to it. Well, uh, for the people that have watched this far, I appreciate it. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and also make sure you follow Hashrush, all their social media. Download the game right now, um, open beta. You can go download it, click on it, you know, have fun, you know, try, report some bugs, help the team move this game forward. The more you report bugs, the more you play it, the better. Uh, for the team, right? Uh, testers are a very, very important uh, piece of, you know, building a game and building anything, to be honest. You know, you need to people to test. So um, thank you guys for, for your time and thank you guys for, you know, doing this in my channel as well. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. This was really fun.